In section 2.3, we will talk about percentiles. The kth percentile, denoted by the notation p sub k of a set of data values, is a value such that k percent of observations are less than or equal to the value. Okay, so what does that mean? For example, if you are in the 80th percentile, then at most, 80% of values are lower than your value, or your value is greater than 80% of the values. So on a test, let's say you, you uh, performed in the 80th percentile. It doesn't mean you got an 80%. What it means is that you did better than 80% of students who took the test. Who took the test. Okay, once again, the 80th percentile, it does not mean you got an 80% on the exam. It just means you did better than 80% of students who took the exam. Another example, on a 20 question math test, the 70th percentile for correct answers was 16. That means someone who got a 16 did better than 70% of students who took the exam. So let's write this two ways. One way to write this is we can say that 70% of students, 70% of students scored at or below 16 out of 20. We can also say that someone who got a 16 out of 20, so a student who got 16 out of 20 correct scored better than 70% of students who took the who took the quiz okay so these two are two interpretations of the 70th percentile Okay, let's talk about quartiles. Quartiles divide data sets into fourths. So if this is the smallest data value, and this is the largest data value, the first quartile, it divides the bottom 25% from the top 75%. Therefore, the first quartile, Q1, is equivalent to the 25th percentile. Because remember, the 25th percentile, what it means is that this value is larger than 25% of the values. So Q1 is the 25th, it's equivalent to the 25th percentile. Q2, this step divides the bottom 50% of data from the top 50% of data. So the second quartile, or Q2, this is equal to the 50th percentile. Remember, the 50th percentile, it means that at this value, Q2, is larger than 50% of the data values. We're going to talk more about this in, in, the, in a couple of sections, but the, the second uh, quartile, Q2, is also called the median. The median separates the, the lower half of data values from the upper half of the data values. But we'll get more into this later on. Q3, the third quartile, this separates the 75% of the data values from the top 25% of the data values. So Q3, this is equivalent to the 70th percentile. Now, to find the percentile of a data value, there are two steps. Step one, arrange the data in ascending order. This is important. Ascending means from lowest to highest value. The percentile of a value x is a number of values that are less than x divided by the total number of values times 100%. For example, these uh, are the scores of 40 bowlers in a bowling league. Find the percentile of a bowler in the league who scored 150 points. So this question is asking, if a bowler scored 150 points, which percentile was this bowler in? In other words, what percent of bowlers did this bowler perform better than? So let's take a look at 150 points. There are two of them, but we're going to take the first one. And let's count the number of values that are less than x. So how many values are less than 150? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
Number of values less than x, in this case 150, are 10. The total number of values, they're 40 bowlers, so that's going to be 40. And we're going to multiply this by 100%. 10 out of 40 is 0 0.25. 0 0.25 times 100%, this is the 25% or the 25th percentile. So 150 is in the 25th percentile, which means a bowler who scored 150 scored better than 25% of the, of the other bowlers. Now let's take a look at 278. 278 is right there. So we want to figure out if a bowler scored 278, what percent of bowlers did this bowler score better than? So let's count the number of values oops, that are less than 278. So we have 10, 20, 30 and 33. 33 bowlers scored less than 278. Let's divide that by the total number of values, which is 40. Multiply that by 100%. Um, and this comes out to be 82.5%, which we can round to 83%. What this tells us is that 278 is in the 83rd percentile. Now let's go the other way. What if you wanted to find the data value at the kth percentile? So let's say we wanted to find the data value at the 70th or the 85th or the 90th percentile. Suppose we wish to find the data point that corresponds to the kth percentile out of n values. We have to find this data value's position or location in the list of values ascending in uh, a range in ascending order, which again means from lowest to highest. So L stands for the location of the value in the data set. So the L is given by k, which is the percentile we're looking for, divided by 100 times n, which is the total number of values. Now, th there are two cases. If L is not a whole number, then you round L up to the next whole number and find the data value corresponding to that position. So we always, in this case, when we're looking for uh, the data value at the kth percentile, the L, the location, you always round up. Now, if L is a whole number, then take the average of the L and L plus first data value. So let's, let's look at an example. Using the data from example one, find the following percentiles, the fifth percentile. So for the fifth percentile, we got to find the location of the fifth percentile. Okay, so the location of the fifth percentile is given by k divided by 100. k is the percentile, so it's going to be 5 divided by 100 times the total number of values, n, which we had 40 bowlers, so it's going to be 5 over 100 times 40. If you multiply 5 over 100 times 40, this will give you 2. Now, in this case, L is a whole number. If L is a whole number, you take the average of the L and the L plus first data value. So we want to get the average of the second and third, the L and the L plus first data value. So let's go back to our data set. Our second data value is 100. Our third data value is also 100. To get the average of any two numbers, you would add up the numbers and divide it by how many numbers there are. So we would take 100 plus 100 divided by 2. That's 200 divided by 2, or 100. So the fifth percentile is equal to 100. Now for proper notation, if you leave the answer like this, this would be incorrect. 100 represents a fifth percentile. So for proper notation, we would write p sub 5, that represents the fifth percentile, this equals to 100. Okay, in part b, let's find the 21st percentile. For the 21st percentile, we have to find the location of the 21st percentile. So the location is going to be 21 divided by 100 times n, which is 40. If you take 21 divided by 100, multiply that by uh, 40, this will give you 8.4.
Now it says if L is not a whole number, like 8.4, this is not a whole number, we round L up to the next whole number. So L equals to 9 in this case, which means you want to find in when the data is arranged in ascending order, you want to find the ninth data value. So let's go back to our data values. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The ninth data value is 145. So using proper notation, we would say that P sub 21, or the 21st percentile, is equal to 145. Okay, try part C and part D on your own. Find the 90th percentile. Now for the third quartile, remember the third quartile, this is equivalent to the 75th percentile, which means your K value would be 75. So work on those on your own, and we will go over this in class.